Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Sunbeam Mixmaster Heritage Series Stand Mixer. Some of you had asked for this review and I also wanted to do this because it's an inexpensive option for those who haven't saved up for a KitchenAid. The mixer comes in a couple of different colors. The mixer looks really cute and I like this tangerine orange color. The body is die cast metal and there are non-skid rubber feet on the bottom. The mixer is 15 inches tall, 9 and a quarter inches wide and 13 inches deep. It weighs about 9 pounds. The cord length is 36 inches. The Sunbeam is 350 watts and has 12 speeds. Use this dial to select the speed you want. The user manual tells you which speed to use for different tasks. There are also a few recipes in the manual for cakes, cookies, and frosting. This is the included 4.6 quart stainless steel bowl. It's about 8.5 inches across and 5 inches deep. Two chrome steel dough hooks and two chrome beaters are included. They're packed outside of the styrofoam in the box, so look for it there. There are no whisks included, but you can purchase them separately by calling Sunbeam. You notice the bowl sits off center and that is how it's supposed to be. There is a turntable below the bowl. The bowl will spin during mixing, but you do have to help it along. Push the tilt release button and the head pulls back. It'll lock. Notice with the beaters, one has a green tab on it and one has gray. There is a green dot here. First insert the beater with the gray tab. Just turn it a little and then insert the one with the green tab. Press the tilt release button again and the head goes down and it locks. The beater with the green tab has a white nylon helper tip and that helps turn the bolt. Since the bowl sits off center, it should be easier to add ingredients while it's on. The beaters rotate in the opposite direction and the bowl will spin. And that's supposed to make mixing more even. When you're done mixing, press the eject button to eject the beaters. The mixer head has a handle that you can use to move it. It's much easier to move around since it's less than half the weight of other stand mixers. This is the bowl selector. You have to move the selector to the large bowl setting. There's a picture here or the small bowl setting. There's a picture over here. Move it to the right or the left, depending on if you're using the large bowl, which is this one, or the small bowl, which is 2.2 quarts. The small bowl is available on Sunbeam's website and I'll put a link to that below in case you want to get it. I'll choose the uh, large bowl setting since we're using the 4.6 quart bowl. When you first get the unit, wash the beaters, the dough hooks, and the bowl in warm soapy water and dry. They're also dishwasher safe. The mixer itself can be wiped down. Usually with my stand mixer reviews, I do whipped cream. Since there are no whisks included, I'm going to try whipping cream with the beaters. When you're mixing, start on low speed and then go up to high. For whipped cream, we can go up to the max of 12. I'm going to whip two cups of heavy cream. The cream is very cold. I just took it out of the fridge. I'll start on low speed and go up to about 10 or 12. And you have whipped cream. This is soft peak. You can keep going if you want stiff peaks, but even without the whisk, the beaters did whip the cream. And it was done at about the same time as other stand mixers. I added a little sugar and I'll beat the cream to stiff peaks. You saw the bowl move by itself. I didn't have to help it along at all. Next, I'll make chocolate chip cookies using the standard beaters. If you want the recipe, I'll put a link right below this video. To cream butter and sugar, I'll use medium speed, which is four to six. When I add the flour, I'll of course lower the speed, otherwise I'll have flour all over me. The speed should also be low when I add the chocolate chips at the end. First, I'll add two sticks of softened butter and cream this for about a minute. Thank you. 
that looks good. Initially you saw I had to give it a nudge because the beaters were stuck on a piece of butter, but then I didn't have to help it along at all. It moved by itself. Now I'll add the white sugar and brown sugar. With other mixers, you do have to scrape down the bowl, so I'll do the same with this. And you notice you don't have to actually stop the mixer um, while you scrape down the side of the bowl. You could just use a small spatula like this and go around it because the beaters won't hit the spatula like in other mixers. Now I'll add the eggs and the vanilla. Now I'll add the flour. and the chocolate chips. You notice sometimes you do have to help the bowl along. You can see how fluffy the batter is. I think it's even fluffier than with a KitchenAid mixer. Here's our super fluffy chocolate chip cookie batter. I did find it easier to add the ingredients while the mixture was on because the bowl is offset. It's a nice wide bowl and very little splattered out when I was making the whipped cream and when I was making the cookie dough. Next I'm going to use the dough hooks to make dough for Indian bread like chapatis and rotis. For kneading use low speed, one to three. If you're kneading a large quantity, you can use medium speed. I'm using Atta, which is a Durham flour blend. The dough hook with the green tab matches the green dot. The gray tab goes in the other slot. I'll add the flour first, a little salt, a little oil, and hot water last. It's two cups. Salt. I'll put this on low speed to mix, add a little bit of oil, and then stream in hot water. Then I'll knead it for a couple of minutes. When you're making dough, you will need to move the bowl along because the ends of the dough hooks don't touch the bottom of the bowl. You'll also need to move the flour into the dough hooks in the beginning. in the hot water.
I'll turn up the speed. Add a little bit more water. So you saw you have to be very involved in the mixing of the dough. You do have to constantly push the um, dough towards the dough hooks. Once you get the dough on the hooks, it does knead. Is it easier than kneading the dough by hand? Yes. Is it the most efficient way to knead dough? No. If you make dough in the KitchenAid stand mixture, you don't have to do any work. The KitchenAid will knead the dough by itself. However, the cheapest KitchenAid is going to be double or triple the price of the Sunbeam mixer. So you have to take that into consideration. It's not a fair comparison. The dough does come off cleanly off the hooks. So it did uh, do a decent job of kneading. And it comes off the bowl. My dough is a little bit sticky because I added a good amount of water. You can make a pretty decent dough in this mixer. So you saw how the Sunbeam did on the whipped cream, chocolate chip cookie dough, and bread dough. It's one of the cheapest mixers out there, and I think you can get a lot of use out of it. Using the standard beaters to make whipped cream and cookie dough were pretty easy. It was the same amount of scraping down that you would have had to do with another mixer like the KitchenAid. Of course, the dough required more work, so if you bake a lot of cookies and cakes, and make the occasional dough, I think the Sunbeam is a decent choice. If you want to try the Sunbeam mixer, I'll put a link right below this video.